Field of view, hand tracking, eye tracking, CRISPR optics, better battery life, better comfort, improved computer vision intent prediction, brain computer interface. This to us all sounds glorious because we understand its purpose. But think about the unconverted. Take a step back. This is a much higher level of culture shock and adaptation than going from a 15 button cell phone to a touch screen. To use AR glasses, we're asking people to change not only how they see, but also how they interact. Almost nothing is carrying them from outside AR to inside AR, and that's scary. This is a problem for consumers and developers. Can we introduce all of these concepts to the every person in a gradual way to prep them for the high-end immersive world waiting on the other side? Well, that's one of our missions with the Snapdragon Spaces XR developer platform. Bridging the worlds of today and tomorrow, it's software built on several key principles. Proven technology and innovation, an open platform and ecosystem, and the emphasis of being a developer-first platform. The target form factor starts with Snapdragon-powered glasses paired with Snapdragon-powered mobile devices. We're leveraging, this, leveraging the smartphone and air glasses to take advantage of the best of both worlds while meeting developers where they are. Check out one of our previous AWE sessions on smart viewers for more on the distributed computing technology in this hardware. For commercial deployment, we're working with OEMs to provide consumers options to utilize apps built with the platform. For our first dev kit, we've partnered with Lenovo to provide the Think Reality A3 as our development hardware for the AR glasses, along with the Snapdragon reference mobile device as the attached touchscreen computing unit. We expect commercial designs from our OEM partners to be announced over the coming year. Audience, this question always comes up. Is this a gaming platform? Are you targeting consumers? Is this for enterprise? Well, our goal here is to mainstream AR, to make it as ubiquitous as your mobile phone. That means as a consumer, all purpose focus that can extend and scale up into the enterprise as appropriate. With that in mind, our Snapdragon Studios team put together an AR experience for our booth this week, showcasing just some of the concepts we've envisioned for using AR around the home or our daily lives. Since we're illustrating holograms within holograms, we use a color language with grayscale representing the real world, the blue people as users, with color representing the AR content that they're experiencing. So imagine streaming media at any size in your room, wherever you want it. I uh, lean back gaming using 3D reconstruction to transform your home space into a dynamic game level. Active gaming, leveraging the controller sensors for 3DOF tracking ability today and 6DOF in the future, which is great for fitness aficionados. <laughs> Image recognition and tracking allow for an augmented cookbook that can use hand tracking to interface with without having to touch screens with dirty or flowered hands. And finally, waiting for your flight home would be much more fun with a floating game screen where you can still safely pay attention to your surroundings while you play. We envision a world where AR isn't a dystopian future, but rather provides a personalized experience that lets us see all around us in volumetric 3D closer to the way we as humans actually see the real world. To achieve all this, we're investing heavily in perception technologies that we're incorporating into the platform. These should all sound familiar if you're already in the space. Pos positional tracking, anchors and persistence, spatial mapping and meshing, plane detection. But I want you to pay close attention to our recognition and tracking features. See, while we're building organically, we also level up through acquisition. And we announced that Wikitude and Clay Air, both well known in the space, are officially part of the Qualcomm family bringing their perception technology in-house with image recognition and tracking, object recognition and tracking, and hand tracking, all folding in to Snapdragon Spaces. Our other two key pillars are very related. Our open platform cross-device XR ecosystem means that as more OEM partners come online with new mobile and glasses platforms, we will allow them to target those new devices without having to rebuild their apps. We're also working with Kronos to adhere to and extend OpenXR to make development easy. By including OpenXR integration at the lower layer and technology such as AR Foundation up top, 
This should allow devs to increase the reach of their existing AR XR apps with very little porting effort. And that leads me to one last upcoming technology in the SDK I've been very excited to share with you for months. When pairing headset to mobile, the natural idea is to align the design to that of other HMDs, with the headset driven by a mobile computing device for its CPU and GPU, and onboard sensors to transform your phone into a modified flat touchpad controller, which our platform supports. But we looked at this again from another angle, and we pondered the question, what if, instead of a headset complemented by the mobile phone as an accessory input, we looked at it the other way, where the primary experience is an app on your mobile phone and the headset enhances the mobile app as an accessory output. Our layperson term we're using for this is AR as a feature for your mobile app. It's still early in development, but is a big and important part of our SDK. Think about that for a minute. Today, even with amazing tools like MRTK, porting a mobile app to a fully AR HMD requires an entire spatialization of the UI for navigating and menus and figuring out how to handle interrupts before even building out the actual gameplay loop. It's a lot of work to, for developers and a whole re-education exercise for consumers. What does it even look like? Uh, I put together a quick lab video. Ignore the jittery shaky cam, that's, that's me using R&D equipment. I just wanted to show what it looks and feels like. So this here is an illustration of how we can keep everything already built for a mobile app, add glasses, and then what you have is AR, sure, but with menus that are still easy to navigate. And you get to keep all the tech you've already incorporated into your app. Two-factor authentication, multiplayer engine, database integration, how to scroll, how to search, all stays, and boom, you just add AR where it makes sense. And unlike AR Kit and AR Core, here your UI and your view are no longer fighting for the same pixel space on your device. All of the above were existing mobile AR or mobile apps that were ported over in a week total across five separate prototypes, only a few shown here. In some cases, all we did was drop an additional camera for the AR and it just worked. You know, the reason this was all so easy to create polished prototypes was because we built on top of existing solid apps. Now, a well-known UX designer recently stated something similar on social. <laughs> existing AR ecosystems only have such prolific adoption because they have created products on the foundation of utility and not on the foundation of AR itself. Perfection. Similarly, when you use AR to level up your apps, you're building on existing mobile foundations that you as a developer have refined for years, and your audience as consumers have learned how to use for over a decade. Look at the above. Ooh. Uh, and picture today as our mobile world, with tomorrow as our fully immersive world. With Snapdragon Spaces, you'll be able to slowly add AR to your app, providing something novel with what's already familiar, and where you can take your development team and your consumers and put them on the ramp to the future of XR. <laughs>